Hi, Amanda. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, thank you so much for having me. This is so much fun. I'm so happy that you were willing to come on. So maybe you can just start by introducing yourself to our listeners. Yeah, so um, I'm Amanda. I'm a mom and a PhD candidate. And I really stumbled across this program because I just learned that diet culture was no longer serving me. And I really needed a place to find peace and peace in a great relationship with my body and food. And I was fortunate enough to stumble across this podcast and um, book a discovery call and join the program. Um, And I'm so grateful. Amazing. Okay. So for those who are listening today, we're specifically talking about our recover strong program that Amanda has recently completed. And that's the program that's specifically for binge eating disorder. It's not our weight loss program. It is to deal with binge eating and healing your relationship with your body and with food. So Amanda, let's just go back for a second. Cause you mentioned that you realized that diet culture wasn't serving you. What do you mean by that? So I had lost weight in the past and I kept it off for about 10 years, but it first started with calorie counting and then that wasn't going, wasn't working after a while. So then I switched to weight watchers and then I was counting points. And for the most part, I kept the weight off for that whole time, but I never truly felt like I ever made it. I was always still working towards weight loss and I never really even felt happy in my body. But after having my son, I had gained quite a bit of weight in pregnancy and postpartum. And I kept trying to use those same techniques. So I tried the calorie counting again. I tried Weight Watchers again. And I just, I was, it was boggling my mind why now it wasn't working. And I thought, felt so much shame about like, oh, I lost my willpower. I can no longer stick to these things. And Mm -hmm. my binging had become out of control. I was, it was pretty much like almost every day. And I just knew that I was at the point where I couldn't rely on these diets anymore. I needed to find something different and to just take a whole new approach because they clearly weren't working for me. Yeah. You said something so profound just about that shame piece, right? Like essentially you had blamed yourself is what it sounds like. Like, I, you know, why can't I do this? It's not working for me. And it's like that internalized, like somehow this is your fault, right? It's not like, oh, the diets failed you. It's like, no, I failed this. This was me. Um, And really we have to like really unpack that and be like, no, this is not your fault at all. Like this is toxic diet culture and this is physiology. And we just, we really have to use new tools, right? Yeah. And I think after going through the program, I learned so much more about why those were never going to work for me as a mom and juggling all of what I'm juggling. It's, I have very little of that executive brain functioning that you talked about on this podcast at the end of the day. And so of course I was just going for that need for comfort or that primal drive to just eat for that, to numb some of those feelings of exhaustion and burnout. And I was never going to be able to stick to that very restrictive eating plan because I wasn't, I didn't have enough of those resources, mental resources to do that. And so I learned that it wasn't that I don't have willpower. I'm not a person who wants to make healthy choices. It's just that I didn't have the right coping tools and I just Mm. needed to learn those tools. And I needed to come from a place of compassion instead of this desperation to change myself and to to lose the weight and to get back to my pre-baby body. Yeah. You mentioned that when we were just talking beforehand, like this, that pregnancy was, um, because you went through a body change as we all do, right. Our bodies change with pregnancy. How did that impact you and how you saw your body? Oh, it was, it was really hard. I like look back to my pregnancy now and I feel like it that focus on the scale really robbed me of my chance to enjoy being pregnant Mm. and to really accept that phase and those changes, which were for such a beautiful cause. Um, And it was just that fixation and that, oh my goodness, I'm gaining all this weight back that I already lost and I'm losing all of these healthy habits. And it was almost like I felt like I lost my identity. Like I was no longer that person who lost the weight and was feeling, feeling great about that achieving that goal. And so it was really hard for me to adjust. And I think 
that was why even in postpartum, I continued to gain weight and to have my binging be exacerbated was because I felt just so terrible about that number on the scale. And it was just honestly an obsession. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Tell us about what the binging was like for you, because I think that um, many women may not know what a binge is, or like, we kind of say like, oh yeah, I totally binged on the weekend, but like for you, uh, what was it like? And how did you then know that you actually had an eating disorder? So, um, my schedule is a little different. So I'm usually with my son all day. And then in the evening, I'll head to the lab to do my, my schoolwork. And what was happening was as soon as I got into my car to head to work, I would just drive to a drive through and I would get a, a big meal and it wasn't very nutritionally dense. It was way more food than I needed to feel satisfied. And then sometimes I would even go to another one after to get something sweet. And it was happening pretty much every day. And I, I kind of started to panic because I really like learning about habits. And I was like, oh, I've created this habit now. And I don't know how to break this because I have to go into my car and I have to drive to work. So I just really started to um, kind of like panic about it and feel really stuck. And then I actually reached out to uh, a therapist because I wanted, I knew I was like, I'm struggling with binge eating disorder. I had heard of it before and I just needed help. I knew that the diet definitely wasn't going to help me. And that, um, that experience, while it was helpful in other areas of my life, I felt like the recommendation just, it didn't work for me. It what the recommendation was to eat more mindfully and to really take my time with eating and when I tried that, I, I now that I've done the Recover Strong program, I wasn't addressing any of the triggers. I wasn't addressing just so many more pieces of the puzzle that really contribute to that binging. And so that's why I wasn't um, successful with that. And then I really started to feel kind of stuck. And I found your podcast and I actually was reaching out for the weight loss program. And I had a discovery call with Tanya and she said, you know, I think... Um, a better place for you to start would be the Recover Strong program, just because I think you'll have more long-term success. And I didn't even realize you had that program. And I said, oh my gosh, of course, like, yes, that, that sounds perfect. So um, I did it. And I was a little hesitant because it was a really busy time for me. I had a big exam that overlapped with when I did this program, but I thought in the past, being really busy has also been a time where my eating has been out of control. So I thought, what better way than to like learn these techniques when I really need to apply them? And yeah, it was amazing. It was a little hard to kind of accept at first that I wasn't working towards a goal that was um, aimed at bringing this number on the scale down. So that kind of took my brain a little bit of time to catch up with. Mm -hmm. But then it felt really empowering to have a different goal and to be like, gaining that success and it gave me a confidence in myself and a feeling of peace with my body and my relationship with food that I truly have never felt even when I was quote unquote thinner I've never had this liberation around food and this feeling of peace in my body wow that's amazing so like walk us through how that happened for you like what kind of tools did you start implementing that really made a difference for you so I think one of the first things that really made a difference was the mechanical eating. So eating at regular um, time intervals so that at the end of the day, when I got in my car, I wasn't absolutely starving. Um, so that made a huge difference. And then it was also a lot of the techniques of coping with those feelings of being stressed out or being anxious and feeling exhausted um, that, that really helped. So um, I was really lucky to work with Julie, who was incredible, and she walked me through quite a few strategies that I would just have in my toolbox that when I was feeling those urges to go to a drive through or, or to eat a lot of food, I would just say, you know what, thank you brain, but that's not what I need right now. What I actually need right now is maybe um, to call my mom and to talk to her about how I'm feeling or to maybe take some deep breaths and listen to music or take a break and then maybe go into work. And those strategies really helped me. And it was like, all of a sudden in the program, a switch flipped and I, I just wasn't binging anymore. And I didn't feel those 
urges as much anymore. And it was almost hard to believe. Like I would, I would report to Julie every week and I'm like, I can't believe it, but I didn't have a binge and I had a really busy summer and I was like really doubtful that I would be able to like handle it all. But I, I was. That's amazing. And you did your exam Yeah. in the middle of it. And would yes. that like, would stress be something that would have led you to binging before? Yeah. Oh yeah. Like even like years ago in my undergrad, um, every exam season, it was like food was how I coped with the stress. I would just be mindlessly yeah. eating. And this was probably like the biggest exam I've ever done. And some of the highest levels of stress and also juggling a toddler at the same time. So it was time was very short. And but I'm really glad that I prioritized taking care of myself and learning tools so that I could go through these busy moments, which are bound to happen again, in a healthy way and in a way that feels great and is honoring the choices I want for myself and my health. That's amazing. So I feel like so many moms can relate to what you're sharing right now. Cause when I heard like, you, you know, you have a toddler, you're with them all day. And then in the evening you're going to the lab and like starting your work. And I'm just imagining myself and like my mental state after all of that. So I can fully appreciate that challenge. And so like, just explain again, cause I think so many women are like, how, how is it even possible that you can, you know, actually regulate your emotions and you know, how is calling your mom replacing the satisfaction that food would have brought? Like, it's it's almost hard to even believe that that's truly possible. So how, like, how was that possible for you? I just, I learned that it was never about the food. It was mm. never that I wanted that food so badly, but what I wanted was comfort or an escape from that uncomfortable feeling. And so um, another technique that Julie and I worked on was increasing my tolerance for that feeling of discomfort. And so I would say, okay, I know Amanda that you want to have that food right now, but let's just wait five minutes. Let's see if we can wait five minutes. And what can we do in that five minutes to kind of distract ourselves and we'll check in again. And so I think delaying and really thinking about it was allowing me to see like, oh, I don't actually want the food. What I really need right now is maybe a moment of rest because I'm exhausted. And so I would take that moment and then eventually that urge and that feeling of wanting that food would go away because I actually fulfilled what the need was below the food. So the food was always just a surface band-aid and it was truly never about that. And I I think one of something that you just mentioned, um, you were saying a lot of moms can maybe relate. And I think Julie had mentioned that in my, in my, um, when I had an appointment with her and I, I felt really alone in this. I truly thought that no one else feels these things and no one else experiences this. And it made the biggest difference to me to learn that it's way more common than I think. And that these feelings are not because I'm weak or because I just don't know how to cope. It is just, it is normal and it is valid. Like it's valid to feel these way, this way. And that in and of itself was just so helpful and so healing to find out. So um, even just before I did this program, like I know listening to your podcast, there's so many times I'd hear someone say something and I'd be like, those are like the thoughts right out of my head. So if anyone's listening and, and they feel alone, I hope that they, they listen to this and they feel a little bit less alone because it's definitely not just, it's not just you. It's way more common. Yeah. Yeah. That's so profound. Thank you for, thank you for saying that. I think women need to hear that. Right. And because shame is such a hallmark of binge eating disorder, it keeps people in the dark, right? It keeps people hiding, not wanting to reach out, not wanting to talk about it because they feel so ashamed or embarrassed or guilty or like, this is something that's so wrong with me. And it's like my deep, dark secret, right? Yeah. Yeah. How has your relationship with your body changed since going through this? Um, it I've become a lot more positive about my body. And at first it wasn't a feeling of positivity. It was more of a neutrality, which is what I was aiming for. Um, but one of my my biggest struggles was that I would compare myself to other moms. So I would like look at their babies and I'd say, oh, their baby is even younger than mine and they've already mm-hmm. snapped back. And, and that was something that 
I really struggled with and I was doing a lot and it would make me feel really ashamed of myself. And Julie had me do this exercise where she's like, okay, for three days, you're going to compare yourself as much as you can. And I, I want you to like intentionally do it as much as you can for three days. And then you're going to try to stop for three days after that. And it was through that exercise, I was actually with my son at a trampoline park. And I remember being on the trampoline with him. And I thought to myself, the thought popped into my head, oh, I'm the biggest mom here. And then I was like, a switch just flipped. And I said, so I'm also the mom who's on the treadmill jumping and present and having a great time with my son. And we've been laughing our head off the whole time we've been here. Mm -hmm. And it just really clicked for me that the things that I admire about other moms, it has nothing to do with their weight or how they look. It's how much joy they get from parenting and how present they are as parents and how loving they are. And it has nothing to do with what they look like. And so it allowed me to really let that shame go about being in a bigger body and being a mom because it, it truly has who I am as a mother just has nothing to do with what my weight is. And I felt a lot of shame about that for a long time. And I thought I would think that people were judging me and thinking that I was setting a bad example for my son. And a lot of that is just things that I'm assuming and no one has ever said to me, but I know how I think about other people. And it's never that I'm judging them for that. So I have to stop assuming that other people are judging me for that and focusing on what's actually important. So that was a moment where I was like, oh, wow, like things have really changed for me. Um, and it really felt like I made a lot of progress. And I kind of just continue that, like when those thoughts pop up, which they still do sometimes, I just shut them down. And I say, no, like, that's actually not true. And that's not what's important right now. And it has allowed me to feel so much more positive about myself. It's amazing. I teared up just thinking about that because you know what, what I think for so many women obsessing over our bodies and our appearance just robs us of actually being present and enjoying life and like, and, and, and living our life to the fullest and like having the impact that we're supposed to have and being with our kids the way you were just describing, because we're like, oh, like, is my belly sticking out? Like, can they see my love handles in these pants? Like, we're just like, so hyper-focused on these things that at the end of the day, like don't even matter. Right. Absolutely. And I remember talking to Julian. I, this summer I went to the beach with my family and I put on a bathing suit and I didn't think anything of it. And I felt free. Like I felt just so present and I was having so much fun. And that is something that I would never have been able to do if I didn't have, if I hadn't joined this program. And mm. I even was telling Julie about this. I said, I have very few photos of me and my son when he was a newborn because I just didn't want to be in photos. And I regret that. But this summer, I took so many photos and I captured Amazing. so many memories. And I just feel like I am so grateful that I did this because I know in the future, when I look back, I'm going to cherish that I have these memories. And I may not have them from when he was very, very little, but I'm making up for lost time. And it is truly because I have done so much healing that I get to do that now. It's amazing. I, that, that is, that is everything for me. Cause it's not only for you to have those memories, but like your son, when he grows up and he can look back and be like, yeah, look at these fun times I had with mom when we were like at the beach and or at the trampoline park, like to be able to capture that and not be hiding because you're feeling you're like, you know, clothed in shame, but now you just have so much freedom and peace. Like I, that's so, so amazing. Okay. So Amanda, I, this has been so profound. Um, in closing, what would you like, is there anything that we didn't touch on that has been really significant for you that you would want women listening to, to hear from you? Um, yeah, I remember listening and feeling so stuck. I felt like I was going to struggle with this forever because I just couldn't see a way out, but there truly is a way out and you just have to decide that you're worth it and that you deserve that that time dedicated to yourself so I almost made the excuse that I was going to be too busy this summer and I, I couldn't do it but I am so grateful that I carved out the time I mean you could see that I'm sitting in my car right now I sat in the car for most of my appointments it was just how I made it work and I'm just it wasn't picture perfect but it I got to do it and I truly feel like I'm on the other side and so if you're listening 
and you feel stuck, I just want you to know that there is another side and it's a side with so much more peace and so much more love and compassion for yourself that truly is like worth every minute and every little bit of investment into it because it's it's the best feeling. It, it just is so nice not to be stuck and not to feel that shame anymore. Amazing. Amanda, thank you. Thank you for coming on. It's been such um, an honor to have you as a guest. And it's such a full circle moment because you found us through the podcast and now you are a guest sharing your transformation. And this has been so hope filled. So thank you. Thank you for having me. This is great.